Hi, I'm recording today from the Lighting Lab at the University of Leeds. We have this very uh, special lab where we can change the colour of the lighting in the room. Um, it's not just changing it with red, green and blue lights, it's literally changing it spectrally so we can define the spectral uh, distribution of light in the room. And um, you'll see it changing during the course of this video, uh, cycling through various, various colours. And I thought this was very appropriate today because uh, I'm going to talk about light today. And in particular, I'm going to talk about the question, is blue light uh, dangerous? And of course, we take for granted that when we say dangerous, we mean dangerous for humans, not for, for example, uh, prawns or some other thing. Um, but what do we mean by blue light? Well, blue light is normally considered to be about 450 to 480 nanometers. Below that, we have violet light. And the lowest wavelength that's visible to us is usually about 360 nanometers. It actually depends on intensity. It varies from person to person. But, but let's say 360 nanometers because the CIE uh, defines light as those wavelengths from 360 to 780 nanometers. And then below that we have UV light in the range 100 to 400 nanometers. So actually there's an overlap between UV light and visible light. Light at say 380 nanometers is both UV light and is also in the visible range. So when people ask whether blue light is dangerous, they're, they're normally referring to just short wavelength visible light, perhaps some, some UV light as well. Um, rather than, strictly speaking, the light in a very narrow range, 450 to 480 nanometers. So in this video, I'm, I'm going to look at short wavelength light and also UV light and look at whether any of these things are dangerous. So, first of all, we can say, is radiation at any of these wavelengths dangerous to us? And the, the, the answer, of course, is that yes and no, and, or it depends. It's yes, because exposure to light at any wavelength, even in the visible spectrum, will kill you if the intensity is high enough. And it's no, because a single photon of light at any wavelength in the visible spectrum will cause no harm whatsoever. So we always have to bear in mind that whether it's dangerous depends upon the intensity and the exposure time we might call that the dose. But if you Google whether blue light is dangerous, you'll get lots of images like this and like this. Why is this? Well, there are two things I'm going to talk about in this video. Um, the first is going to be potential damage of short wavelength light to the skin and to eyes. And the second thing is going to be potential damage of short wavelength light to our um, healthy sleep patterns. So um, the first of these is based on the fact that the shorter wavelengths of light are more energetic. And by that, I mean that the, the photons or packets of light have more energy the shorter the wavelength. So UV light is more energetic than light in the visible spectrum. And, and UV light is normally split into three bands. The, um, the most dangerous is um, UVC. Um, this is 100 nanometers to 280 nanometers, very short wavelength, uh, very dangerous. UVB is 280 to 350 nanometers, and UVA is the least dangerous, it's 315 to 400 nanometers. That's the one that overlaps a little bit with the visible spectrum. Now, natural sunlight, the light coming to the Earth from the sun, obviously contains visible light, but it also contains UVA, UVB, and UVC. But the good news is, those very, very short wavelengths, UVC, tends to be absorbed by the Earth's atmosphere. So we don't need to worry about that in terms of natural light. 
But what about UVA and UVB? Well, they can both penetrate our skin. UVA penetrates deeper. UVB only penetrates the top layer of the skin, which is called the epidermis, but it can still do a lot of damage there. And in fact, both UVA and UVB can cause damage to the skin. We do need some exposure to short wavelength light. Um, light in general is, is healthy. Um, it helps the body to produce vitamin D, for example. And early in the 20th century, it was discovered that exposure to light and, and also consumption of cod liver oil um, could prevent or cure a disease uh, called rickets. Um, which incidentally, I, I, I actually noticed in the news yesterday is, is um, it started to become um, slightly more common again in, in the UK, which is quite concerning, which is to do with diet, I think, primarily. What's interesting um, is that UVA and UVB can both literally damage the DNA of your skin, and this can lead to cancer, skin cancer. If you get sunburn, then this is a clear sign that you've been exposed too much um, and you've got skin damage. Sunburn is definitely not a good thing. Skin cancer is actually the most common cancer in the USA. It's estimated that one in five Americans will develop skin cancer at some point in their lives. Nearly 10,000 people are diagnosed with skin cancer in the USA every day. It was literally announced today that Sarah Ferguson, ex-wife of Prince Andrew in the UK, has been diagnosed with skin cancer. In her case, um, malignant melanoma, mel melanoma, which is the worst type. How serious this is for her depends on how early it's been detected. So blue light and near UV light is dangerous to our skin if the intensity is too high and the exposure too long. Uh, the other way um, light might be dangerous in this sense is to our eyes. So UVB is absorbed by the cornea, the outer part of the eye, and also by the lens. Um, so we really have to worry about UVA, but there's some argument that UVA can literally destroy the light sensitive cells, the cones that enable us to see. Some research has suggested that exposure to too much light um, is a risk factor for something called age-related macular degeneration. This is a type of blindness. It's a condition developed in many old people where the central part of the retina is damaged so that you can't see things if you look directly at them. It makes it very difficult to read, for example. It's like having a huge uh, blind spot right in the center of your vision. So the potential danger here is literally being outside, working or on holiday in really bright conditions. People might think of sunglasses as being a fashion accessory, but I would argue they may be really important to protect your eyes if you're out uh, for long periods and it's very bright and sunny. Uh, some people think that looking at your computer screen can cause this damage to your eyes, since your computers and phone displays emit uh, blue light, though, though not UV light. You can even buy so-called nerd glasses to protect you when using your computer. These are yellow lenses or filters that can um, remove the UV light, or sorry, remove the, remove the blue light. However, it's extremely unlikely that you could get this sort of retinal damage using a computer screen or a phone screen, for example. The light outside on a bright day is thousands, if not tens of thousands of times uh, brighter than the light emitted by your computer. So far, I've co covered the potential danger of UV and blue light outdoors to our skin and eyes. The second thing I want to talk about um, is whether blue light is dangerous in terms of the effect on our sleep. We have an approximately 24 hour pattern of sleeping and waking. But what is the purpose of sleep? This is the very question that has preoccupied Matthew Walker for the last 20 years or so, and I can't recommend 
highly enough his book, Why We Sleep. It turns out that not getting enough sleep, actually not getting the right amount of sleep, because too much can also be a bad thing, has an adverse effect on almost every aspect of our health. Increased risk of heart disease, cancer, obesity, diabetes, etc. Not to mention mental health. Around a quarter of a century ago, it was discovered that in addition to the three types of cones and the rods in the retina of the eye that give us vision, we have a fifth photoreceptor. This is based on a pigment called melanopsin, and it's particularly activated by blue light. And the interesting thing about these photoreceptors is that whereas cones and rods send their signals to the back of the brain, uh, the visual cortex in the occipital lobe of the brain, where vision takes place, I would argue. These special photoreceptors send signals mainly to a more central brain region, which controls a number of non-visual functions, such as body temperature, and the release of various hormones. So we have this 24-hour sleep cycle and our body releases a hormone called uh, melatonin as we fall asleep. And then in the morning, it stops doing that and it starts to produce hormones like cortisol and, and serotonin. And uh, this helps you wake up and get energized for the day. And if you're like me, getting a bit older, you also need to have a good coffee to help the process along. So we now know that exposure to light helps to entrain the timely release of these hormones. One study, for example, found that looking at your smartphone display just before you sleep inhibited the release of melatonin, and this can upset your natural healthy sleep patterns with some negative health risks. You might not even notice it, but you might sleep a reasonable length of time but not get the, the quality of sleep needed. There's a type of sleep called um, deep sleep or REM sleep, which is thought to be particularly important. We've evolved to be exposed to lots of light in the morning and not much at night. In the past, when we worked in the fields um, and agriculture was our main activity, we would naturally get lots of exposure to light in the morning. And then in the evening, we might only have firelight or candlelight. And not only are these lights not very bright, but they contain very little short wavelength light, the type that particularly activates these special photoreceptors. So many researchers today are concerned because, first of all, we might be getting too much exposure to short wavelength light in the hours before sleeping. And secondly, we might not be getting enough light in the morning. Of course, some of you will have heard of seasonal affective disorder. It's a type of winter-based depression that is often treated with a bright light in the morning. One study found that use of light therapy like this was about as effective as antidepressants. One of my uh, PhD students here at Leeds University, Mong Yuan, um, is using this, this lighting lab I'm in, I'm in now to try to establish whether exposure to light in the morning would be beneficial in health terms, particularly mental health, to everyone, not just people diagnosed with seasonal affective disorder. I also worry about care homes for the elderly and whether residents get enough access to light in the morning, especially in places such as the UK and Northern Europe, where during the winter there's not much morning light. Ideally, we'd like these care homes to be fitted with what we call dynamic lighting, where the lighting is very bluish and intense during the morning, but then gradually gets less intense and, and warmer as the day progresses. It's not expensive to do this these days with um, low-cost um, lighting technology and, and computing power. Um, but I think there's a lack of awareness about this problem. So let's summarize what I've been saying because there are a couple of things. Firstly, short wavelength light and UV 
light is potentially dangerous to us. In some cultures, having a tanned body may be attractive, but you need to ask yourself whether the risk of skin cancer is worth it. Sun tanning booths and shops are banned completely in Australia. And personally, I think they should be banned everywhere. Th there's no such thing as a safe tan. And sun creams may not even provide the protection that they claim. And in the description below, I'll put a link to an article by my colleague, Professor Richard Blackburn, who is an expert about this, this very topic. So secondly, there is potential that too much exposure to bright light may increase risk factor of a type of blindness called macular degeneration. But it's not proven. There is a concern, but to be honest, there are other risk factors that may be more important. The most important risk, fa risk factor for macular de de degeneration is, is literally age. The older you get, the more likely you are to um, contract it. And I don't, certainly don't think anyone needs to worry about using their computers in terms of risks to damage to the eye. However, the third area I spoke about was the effect of light on sleep, and this is a, a very serious concern. Um, it's probably a good idea not to use your phone or tablet in bed just before you sleep. Um, now, if you do, consider using night mode or, or just turning the brightness down, and that would probably be okay. And remember that getting enough light in the morning may be just as important as avoiding too much in the late evening. And if you do want tips about how to get better sleep, I really do recommend Walker's book. It's not just about light, he talks also about other considerations to to get better sleep, including um, room temperature. So if you if you like this, do do please like the video because uh, if for no other reason, then it makes me feel um, a little bit happier uh, seeing seeing that. Um, and with that, see you next time.